this looks uh, just like the TVs they have in uh, Fallout. <laughs> it's Radiation one, King. It's the one you see the most of. Yeah. Uh, one period programs, movies, series. Very iconic. Very iconic. Well, here's the. Uh, magnifier. Yeah, magnifier. So last time I was out, I was told this was full of oil. Uh, I can't imagine it doesn't. You don't see any wavy or anything in it when you pick it up. It's basically, I think, all glass. The little three-inch set down there, my uh, brother-in-law had one like that. He was the first one in the family, and he had a five-inch magnifier on a three-inch set. Oh, wow. But it's 40s technology that was a big deal for us, you know, back in the 80s. Oh, 90s. yeah, this is that, um, the, uh, this is like a Fresnel screen. This yeah. Is, yeah, but it's a small tube through mirrors. Yeah, okay. But again, like I say, you're looking at 1940s technology. It was a big deal. <laughs> Probably had to drive the tubes pretty hard on that thing. Probably generated mm -hmm. some x-rays. Mm -hmm. And it all just fit down into the cabinet. Yeah, that would fold down. Uh -huh. This record player out there that has an odd mechanism to allow you to turn the record over. Oh, okay. Huh. It's kind of like a jukebox. Uh, mechanism. It's about a one minute long piece. The guy only plays a couple seconds of sound. Pushes so this next section. So this was a halo light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here a while back that it had a, a repair shop. Early on he yes. said he saw... Oh, oh the video disc? Mm -hmm. Oh this is the capacitive discharge uh, RCA Correct. disc? This is what they look like inside this sleeve or guide stays in the player closed up when you pull oh. it out it holds on to it like you see there in that one. And it plays, it has forward, reverse, pause capabilities, and it'll play color. In this case here, I, I play this one because I like Earl Flint. <laughs> <laughs> what, what year were these uh, being made? Reading on sheet there, I think about 1980s they faded out, but it took them 16, 17. Oh, first conceived in 1964. Okay. Wow. But video disc. Until 1981. Mm -hmm. Video disc, that's right, video tape came along about that time. Yeah. And you could record at home, you know. That's right. So. It was outmoded by the Disco Vision laser disc and emerging Betamax and VHS video cassette. That's fascinating. So it stores it for you. That's ingenious. And you had to flip it halfway through, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. Huh? I've never never had one that let it play all the way through. Could not tell you. On it. <laughs> <laughs> but knowing knowing the fact that this one has information on the back, odds are it may well have. If you want. I think that if you look at the information, yeah. I bet that's the uh, the Pulse the vertical blanking, and there's probably a bunch of horizontal blankings mm -hmm. along here. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. You get it just right. Oh yeah. If you get very close, you can actually see the uh, the uh, the horizontal blankings, and then this is the larger mm -hmm. vertical blanking mm -hmm. in here. So they were yeah. packing a lot of information in, in very few degrees of rotation in here. And when it's you pretty consider, amazing you for consider 60s that, technology. You know, it gets, the distance around gets smaller. So these would wear over time, right? I would guess, yeah. But if you look at how often you play.
play it, a video disc or something like that, a recording, it may not have gotten used too much. Maybe at first you would have. 1939 World's Fair, acquired by a radio station owner, engineer, uh, and he had a TV license for a, like channel 47 or 49 when there were no uh, tuners for those frequencies. And uh, he used it to do a little bit of broadcasting. He had a man on the street and things like that type of thing, and it mostly went to uh, commercial stores. They were set up near the happy. And our curator acquired this and uh, has it on loan to us. And we asked him about insurance because, you know, it's one of the rare things we have here, and he has it insured personally. Mm -hmm. We had a slightly smaller one. There were iconoscopes. And the, f the film chains, what we call a film camera, which was a stationary camera for projectors and slide projectors, would have had one like that in. I'm not sure how common they are. Uh, I have one. So. <laughs> iconoscope. Mm -hmm. Those are big tubes. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you've seen the size of the first color out there. And, yeah. And the tubes on those are about that long. And <laughs> that face about that big. Wow. So I find interesting is there's no viewfinder that I can tell. There weren't on a lot of them. You'll see some old pictures and they'll have, some of them will have a two wire frame like you found on some old home movie cameras. Just and to help aim. And I've seen some with gun sight. You know, mounted on Just the side. to aim in the general direction basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the outer and inner cameras are from Channel 33 Public Radio Television. Television. Yeah. That's what we had in the studios at the beginning, and the color cameras came along about four or five years later. You were looking at you know about fifty thousand for the color camera. I don't know what these cameras cost individually. We got a package from RCA. Oh, really? That included enough equipment to do two studios. We had five tape machines, four cameras, transmitter, where the tire was included in that and all. And this one's great because you have four lens positions you mm -hmm. can switch between. Early, early on cameras were yeah. like that. Even the color camera, the big one out there, it was set up for a rack 